about through uh, when I was presenting work at Art Basel Hong Kong. Um, and that's where Thomas and the crew and the, the jury there had mm -hmm. seen as part of uh, the discovery sector where I was presenting with my gallery from New Zealand, Michael so The Lake. gallery has to decide to apply with your work right. to be included in that special sector in Hong Kong. Yes. So it's like a multi-tier process, right? Right. And then yeah. Basel has to accept that. Yeah. Basel has to accept that. Uh, and then to make the work and then present the work and then that's where this, uh, this jury presentation, you, got, you guys went through, I think, some of the 60 galleries there, yes. something like this, and shortlisted three, uh, three artists. Right. Three and then you, you, artists the, the jury decided on what you presented at the booth. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember Richard Armstrong was in the jury, the director of the Guggenheim. Yeah. And he was asking, I think, how much those shells were. <laughs> and he couldn't believe that he could actually buy them. You know, it was like right away, because he was so <laughs> taken aback by your work. And I, I thought that was, you know, a, a, apart from costs or anything, I think you made a big impact on the jury. Uh, you know, I, we, I never partake in the, in, the, in, the, in the decision, but we sit at the table and it was just, it was very clear and obvious that they would, you know, shortlist you. And then based, I guess, on the proposal that you have a month to come up with, um, they convene again, this time via phone, and decide, very oftentimes, luckily, unanimously, who should, um, who should, you know, be able to go and travel. Mm. And those two artists that were shortlisted and, but didn't get to travel, at least for their efforts of drawing up, you know, a proposal of a, tra of a journey, they, they get a honorarium with which they could travel. Right. You know, because I, I feel like you want to really appreciate an artist's work and not do anything, you know, for free when they're already shortlisted and, and, and put their time mm. behind creating a proposal. Your proposal, how did your proposal differ from what you actually then set out to do. Right. I mean, it definitely evolved, that's for sure. Uh, because there was an elapsed period between uh, the, the writing the proposal, which, yeah, we had one month after Art Basel Hong Kong, and then the awarding of that, which happened then kind of two months later, I think, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, uh, in Basel Basel. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then I had about three or four months to kind of plan further. So it really got honed down. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the expanse of. I think I had I had Southern Africa in there at one point as well. And this wasn't, I think, to do with budget. It was more to do with what I could take yeah, mentally process, yeah. and what I really wanted to focus in on. And so that really became looking quite specifically about these two regions in the, in the world, like Western Europe and the Pacific Islands, and mm -hmm. how through history these two, I guess, uh, parts of the world have met mm -hmm. through through traveling of, of, of different people, of different cultures. When you wrote from your travels, right, you have that blog that is on the website. It was like almost like you were, I don't know, what you call it like with open eyes, you know, like you were, you were like with childlike amazement of what you, of what you saw and what you brought back. I kind of found that, found that so honest in, in terms of delving into these narratives, yeah, yeah. that you become then a, a narrator. Of. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's humbling to travel, right? yeah, it's, it's, there's something and. Specifically, in this case, this was uh, this was the first time I probably really traveled uh, for travel sake. Often, as an mm -hmm. artist, you're traveling for exhibitions, and you're, you you know you're, you're kind of going and you're focusing your time around the exhibition space, the museum, or whatever. So you have these kind of agendas, and this was really an open agenda mm -hmm. where I, I I guess I was kind of. Uh, given this free, this free reign to kind of look at whatever I wanted to look at, so yeah. it, it, I did genuinely feel like a, a sense of kind of it's amazement It's important not to, to give certain parameters, but not, you know, nail you down to, oh, you, uh, you don't have to come up with work, yeah. actually, because, you know, some artists, like, you travel and then five years after something, something happens. Yeah. But I remember that and there was a great moment when you hadn't gone on your travels yet, and we had you on a panel with Samson Young, mm -hmm. you know, the Hong Kong-based artist who was the first one to... Uh, you know, to go on a BMW art journey, and I think we asked uh, the moderator asked like, what advice would Samson give you mm -hmm. before you go on your travels? And I think he said, you know what he said? He said, go go, go crazy. crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> did you go? Did, I mean, did you go crazy or? <laughs> uh, I mean, I was. I, it was also it was tiring, mm -hmm. like moving from from really vastly different places. Uh, it was. It, I, it, there was a. A craziness that occurred maybe in a kind of discombobulating sense of yeah. like where am I like what where am I now mm -hmm. and uh, that was actually 
quite generative in a, in a way. It's to, to be a bit disorientated or to be confused about where you are and, and, and kind of who you are. I think it, that's a really important and necessary thing to, to be kind of estranged from yourself at one point when you're traveling because it, it kind of maybe shows you a bit more about where you are from or, or, or how you see things. I think that kind of getting lost a little is, is quite important. And your whole, I mean, for, for now it's up for interpretation, of course, the work you bring back, you know, the, the starscapes that we see, which are actually just kernels of sand, which you exposed in a, in your studio in, in, in Berlin in a, in, a, in a process for photography. Yeah. So that the whole microcosm, macrocosm, I, I was, we, Shakespeare once said, I could be bound to a nutshell and count myself king of infinite space. And I thought, this is what your work, you know, brings. And, and when we talk about poetry, anything with stars is... Mm. It's by definition, you know, poetic, I would think, and 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 um, the way that you know you you looked at these these narratives of Polynesian islands in the Pacific and and the the, the wave formations, the birds, uh, the migration, and and the stars and, and and the waves and how that could guide people without a sextant, without a compass, without the Western narrative of exploration, mm. you know, that back then many thousands of or I don't know how many thousand years ago you would know better people knew what they were doing when they right. were going out on the ocean without seeing on the horizon that there was another island. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's many examples within these places and within these communities that are, are post a kind of a, a kind of intelligence that, uh, that is often over, overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess one way I would describe, like, as, as you kind of broadly sketched out there, is, is, uh, is it, as a kind of tuning tuning one's attention and maybe this is what like art is really fantastic for as a vehicle to uh, to tune into uh, things that might be overlooked or uh, parts of the natural world or, or parts of, of how we are related to the natural world um, and how we're actually quite contingent and dependent upon certain things I think that was all uh, kind of folded into some of the research topics I guess that we were looking at with this kind of mapping style. So by looking at down. vessels, you become a vessel yourself of those narratives. Right. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. 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 Somebody was asking yesterday, Andras was asking, like, give us an example of where you were really touched in a, like, a sublime way or something. Mm. And, and then, you talked about that before, but I never got quite... It, it, you talked about the shadow of a mountain on something else. Ah, tell right. me, Tell me one more time what... So I, I can envision it, what, what you meant by that, and how that, how that resonated with you so deeply. Mm, I mean, so this was in, on the island of Hawaii. Yeah. Is, uh, the island of Hawaii is, is largely a volcano. Mm -hmm. The volcano is called Mauna Kea. And on the peak of this volcano, uh, it hosts a number of the world's kind of most sophisticated astronomical observatories. So they're really huge. Kind of From the US, or do they belong to Europe? All it's over like the world. Everybody yeah, it's is like there. An international okay. place. I mean, represented in different mm -hmm. different places have different representations. But um, so you can visit there, and I did this tour of, of, during a kind of sunrise a visit mm -hmm. to the to the peak uh, mm -hmm. of this volcano. You walked up, or no, no, no. Yeah. You drive. I mean, it was like <laughs> it's a, a long. <laughs> it's a three-hour drive. So oh, wow, well, wow. Well, okay. Because this is also like a. a Technically, like it's taller than Mount Everest, this, mm -hmm. this volcano. If you count it from the ocean floor to its peak, yeah, yeah. it's like three kilometers taller than Mount wow. Everest. So okay. it's really like a massive mm -hmm. kind of geological phenomenal yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. um, as the sun rose, mm -hmm. uh, it projected like it was it's horizontal to the landscape, right? Mm -hmm. So. It projected the shadow of this of this huge mountain yes. onto the western horizon. So I made a I made a photograph of it, which you can see in the book. But you ah. have this kind of like mirage, which looks like there's a whole nother volcano or mountain emerging from where the the sky and the ocean meet on the horizon. It's because the shadow. shadow was protruding all the way to the line of the horizon. Yeah. Be oh, because of the sun rising on the other side. Exactly. That united yeah. perspective in some ways, which I I found was kind of really yeah. telling mm -hmm. for. For I guess the issues that are surrounded around Mauna Kea right now, where uh, there, there's a number of protests with uh, with indigenous Hawaiians who who feel that this place is being kind of uh, pushed aside of its cultural significance with okay. the plans to build more right. of these telescopes. And mm -hmm. it's not necessarily about a kind of a war against you know science or, mm -hmm. or West or or 
indigenous no, the front location, problem, but it's, it's, yeah. it's just it's just about the way that the site has been treated, yeah. and so it's a, it's a complex set of set of entwinements, and I think just kind of visiting the site and kind of uh, learning about its kind of phenomenal power mm -hmm. at, at this kind of sunrise moment was was just telling to me. Yeah.